as a person as well. Um, because sometimes, you know, I, I when I try to go through, you know, um, the border control, because I, I live in the UK, so every time I came to Europe, I have to go through the, you know, the, the security and stuff. Not like, you know, you can just fly, um, you know, let's say from Amsterdam to here, you don't have to go through all this stuff. Um, but yeah, so um, I, some, a lot of times I won't really like want to keep the, uh, are you ready? No, okay. The pass. <laughs> so I continue. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, usually I won't I won't show my passport until I see the person. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, hey everybody, I'm Sunny, and today I'm going to talk to you about how Python could be lying to you. So I will illustrate my, my talk with a story. It's actually a story of a teenager who hacked Python to get into Bergen. Or if you don't know what Bergen is, it's a famous nightclub in Berlin. So if you don't know what you're doing this weekend, <laughs> just check it out. Okay, so we live in a hypothetical world where uh, everybody is using open source, so especially Bergen, to manage like their entry. And uh, this is basically their code to manage each point. So basically you get this bouncer guy who check if the people is like um, major or not and then kick him out. So if you can quickly go into the code, he check if the age is minus 18, then he, act, he reject him or accept him. Pretty good, um, pretty, pretty easy. So according to you, Python expert, what is code is going to do? So this is, I try with the Ryan 17, who think is going to say, why are you even trying to get in? And who think is going to say, let him in? <laughs> okay, let's try it. So let me just show you that I'm running the... Okay, this is the code I show you. I've got only two files here, the helper and the main. Let me... Okay, what? He's letting him in. It's strange, right? I mean, 17 is, is less than uh, 18 for sure, so he should have kicked him out, right? Well, there is something in, right hidden in the helper function, and I'm going to show you that. Actually, the helper function contains this small line of code, which I'm, I'm sure nobody knows how, what it's doing, but I'm going to explain. But basically what it's doing is taking the value 18 and putting the value 0. So basically, you said here, yeah, you know, 17 is minus um, uh, less than or equal to 0. It's not true, then you accept him. Why is it happening? Actually, in Python, to, to understand why I can put the value 0 on 18, you have to understand how Python object behave. And uh, on the right, so in C, it's quite easy, not, I won't say easy, but you know, it's straightforward how we int are stored in memory. So you declare an int and you just put it in the stack. But in, in Python, it's more complex. So in Python, everything is an object, even the ints, and they're wrapped into this more complex structure when you have like the actual type of the um, object, the number of reference points for the garbage collector, the size, and the digit which actually stores the actual value. So all of, so, and this is stored on the hip, and for you, you see here the 18 is stored here. But because it's quite slow that you have to have such an object for every int in Python, every int shares the same address in memory. So every, every variable which contains value 18 points to the same place in memory. And this is true for the int from minus 5 to 250. And, and basically, if I change this value, then it changes for all of, the, all of my Python code. And that's why I can change the value. So here, briefly, what I'm doing, I'm just casting, I, I'm taking like the memory, the ID of 18, I'm casting into an object, and the 6 here refers to these digits. So I can put 0 into the, the, the place in memory where there is 18. So here, I'm just putting 0 here. And if you see print 18, it's actually printing 0, because actual value which is stored is 0. Okay, so you can tell me, but Sammy, like someone is going to spot it. Like, let's say this, this kid, this teenager, would want to get into the nightclub. He open a pull request and hiding these small things, you know, just so that the pull request is accepted and he can go into the, his nightclub. Well, it's quite actually it's quite easy to like not display a new a new line. You just have to sneak one line of code in, in, in your pull request. It's quite easy. Well, maybe not easy, but you can make, you can make it happen. So, for example, here I open a small example. And if you have like a file with a lot of lines, like more than 1000, it won't appear in the pull request. So if you don't, if you are not like careful, you can miss it and just accept, you know, the pull request. And then the kid will actually get into the nightclub. So I mean, good for him, but for the software. 
Okay, um, but okay, this is a small, small uh, toy project, but let's try in a real project. So I'm the maintainer of, uh, of Gina, uh, open source company. We do, we do novel search, and we've got um, op, um, yeah, a repository. And uh, I will show you, I'll open a pull request actually, try to sneak this one line of code. So, um, so I will briefly go into the code that I sent. So I'm doing eyes off, so searching the input. And this is basically my pull request, but I sneak this one line of code. You can see it here, but yeah, not as easy to spot, it, a lot of line. And yeah, so it can actually happen on, on code. So what I want to say is be careful, um, be careful open source maintainer, because uh, yeah, review carefully your uh, pull request. And it's the same for all of the developers, don't blindly trust your pit and interpreter. And credit for those two blog posts which helped me to do this. Thanks.